Hi, and welcome to the final video in this series, solving percentage problems using the unitary method and equations. By the end of this video, you should be able to solve some percentage problems using the unitary method. So let's have a look at what that is. The unitary method involves finding one unit, in this case, 1%, and multiplying to find any desired percentage. In this example, if 8% of an amount of money is $48, what is the full amount of money? So we're asked to find 100% of the money. So we write an equation to begin our working out. In this case, we're told that 8% equals $48. What we want to do is use the unitary method. So what we're going to do is find out what 1% is. And to do that, we divide by 8. Because 8% divided by 8 gives us 1%. Now what we do is we divide our $48 by 8 to get an equivalent equation. So in this case, 1% is going to be $6. Now we want to find out what 100% is. So what we do is we take our 1% and times it by 100. This gives us 100%. If we do the same to the other side, $6 times 100, we get $600. So in this case, the full amount was $600. We found 1% first, and then we multiply that by 100 to get 100%. In this example, we're told that 11% of a food bill was $77, and we want to know how much 25% of the bill would be. So we form an equation. We know that 11% is $77. We divide by 11 to work out 1%. This is the unitary method. In this case, $77 divided by 11 is going to be 7. Now we want to work out what 25% is. So we multiply by 25. This tells us that 25% of our amount is going to be $175. Therefore, that 25% of the bill was $175. This middle part, the actual answer to what 1% is, is not really necessary. We don't need it. We don't need to work it out. If this turns out to be a really bad percentage, like something, sorry, really bad decimal, something that's really long, it's unnecessary to write down. As long as you start with $77, divide by 11, and then times by 25, that's going to end, your, end up with your 25% of your amount. So let's look at some equations now. We're told here that a pair of shoes has been discounted by 20%. If the sale price was $120, what was the original price? This reminds me of a question that we would have seen when we worked on GST. If you haven't looked at that yet, you should watch the video on GST. In that, we're, found, we're told what the, original, what the final price is after GST is added, and then we're asked to find the original price. So that's what we're going to do here in a similar way. The original cost is what the amount we're trying to find. Now, if we, if we knew what the original cost was, and we discounted that by 20%, we would get the answer of $120. So what I'm going to ask you is, what would I do to the original cost to discount it by 20%? Now, the original cost is 100% of the amount that we're trying to work out. If I want to discount that by 20%, I actually want to find 80% of the original cost. This will automatically discount by 20%. So if I took the original cost and times it by 80%, I would get the sale price of $120. This is now an equation. And with this equation, I want to know what the original cost was. So what I want to do is I want to get rid of this times 80%. In order to get rid of this times 80%, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it to the other side of my equal sign. To do that, I need to do the opposite of times 80%. Now the opposite of times 80% is divide by 80%. This means that my original cost will be $120 divided by 80%. It is really important that when you're doing this on your calculator that you put the percentage sign in. If you just do 120 divided by 80, that will not give you the original cost. Doing this on my calculator, I get the original cost is $150. You should ask yourself if the answer makes sense. Does it make sense that the original cost was $150 and after I discounted it, I got 120 It does make sense that when you start with a bigger amount and you discount it, you get a smaller amount. Sometimes when we make a miscalculation, we might get an answer that is actually smaller than the original sale price. In this case, we need to be able to rec recognize that and try and work out where we went wrong in our working out. Now, the original cost is what I'm trying to work out, but I don't want to keep writing original cost. So what I do is I replace the original cost with an X. This makes my working out a lot simpler, a lot smaller, and a lot easier to work with. And that is how you find the original price when something has been discounted. Here's what you need to do now. Time to pause and summarize. So we have three examples for you to pause and summarize. 
If you don't understand any of these examples, it's important that you ask questions tomorrow in class so that I can help you out. By now, you should be able to solve problems using the unitary method. As always, good luck.